the 458 SOCOM versus the 556 NATO. We're talking AR cartridges with a little bit of kick today. Hello, friends and lovers. This is Dave Trillo, and you're listening to the Ammunition Guide podcast brought to you by none other than Ammo.com. Chris, necessity is the mother of invention. And today we're going to talk about the 458 SOCOM versus the 556. Now, the 556 is America's most popular center fire rifle cartridge, yep. pretty well known. And a lot of people already have some handle on its origin story. 458 SOCOM is a lot more niche. It really is, Dave. And I have to say, there is a soft spot in my heart for the 458 SOCOM. I think this is a really cool cartridge for an AR-15. And if you like buying cartridges for your AR-15, make sure you click that link down in the description or the pinned comment. Get your free $20 off coupon for here at ammo.com. But like you mentioned, the mother of all invention is necessity, and that is exactly what the 458 SOCOM was birthed out of. So we're going to go back in time to 1992, and we're going to the operation in Somalia. The United States, along with a lot of other countries, formed the Joint Task Force, referred to as Task Force Ranger. During the Somali Civil War, we went in. It was referred to as Operation Gothic Serpent. They were basically going in there to get some belligerents that uh, had maybe done some less than savory things. Things to U.S. embassies. Basically what happened is we got involved in the Battle of Mogadishu. Now, if you've seen the movie Black Hawk Down, that is what the movie was based around. And a lot of complaints came about the ammo fired by the M16 and the M4 carbine. And they were using 62 grain M855 or SS109 based on its NATO designation ammunition. And they were saying that you know, a lot of these guys were taking multiple hits and they weren't going down. And I think this is a fairly common, you know, complaint about the 5.56. So basically what happened is, uh, and this is a, a little bit of myth, but the myth is that a member of Task Force Ranger spoke with Marty Terweem of Teppo Jutsu LLC at a barbecue. They were basically saying, hey, you know, our M855 isn't doing the job. We want something bigger. And what they came up with was the 458 SOCOM. Now, the 458 SOCOM is part of a classification of calibers known as thumper rounds. That was, you know, a concept brought forth by Lieutenant Colonel Jeff Cooper. He basically wanted something that was 45 caliber or larger, could be fired from an AR-15, and take down a whitetail with one shot. And the 458 SOCOM falls into that category. So this wasn't conceived as a deer hunting cartridge right from the get-go. It was always meant to be military, but, but Colonel Cooper was already playing around with the idea of a 45 caliber wider in diameter deer hunting round, and this really appealed to him. Yeah, definitely. It definitely met that criteria that he had. Uh, and the 458 SOCOM came out in 2001. The 458 SOCOM was basically developed using a 50 Action Express case, which is what is typically fired out of the Desert Eagle. They elongated it, gave it a little bit of a bottleneck, and put it down to 458 caliber, and boom, you got the 458 SOCOM ready to go. So right away, I hear bottleneck, and I know that precludes it for, for hunting in a lot of places where, where straight-walled cartridges are necessitated by state law for whitetail. Yeah, other thumper rounds like the 450 Bushmaster or the 50 Beowulf would work for that. But sadly, in states like mine on public land, I can't use a 458 SOCOM. But what you can use a 458 SOCOM for hunting for in every state that allows it is hog hunting. And that is where this cartridge has really taken off and uh, has really become popular because of its fast follow-up shot capability. And it's got that knockdown power that hog hunters really want. Another thing that really works in the 458's favor, especially with hog hunting, is its integration with the suppressor. These things can be ridiculously quiet, especially if you're shooting some subsonic ammunition. Now, that brings us to an interesting point. I know a lot of fellas really love their 458 SOCOMs for home defense. Mm -hmm. And that, uh, that suppressor compatibility certainly enters into it. That would really help. I mean, honestly, if you're firing a subsonic round with a suppressor, it should be hearing safe. When you're dealing with an enclosed space like inside a home, that sound will typically bounce off the walls. It'll sound even louder than what it would outside. You can definitely save your eardrums in a close quarter situation. To that end, becoming proficient with the 458 SOCOM is going to prove a little more difficult because its ammo availability is 
not even comparable to 5.56. No, Dave, you're absolutely right. And I know we've kind of been dogging on the 5.56 a little bit, but honestly, it's one of my favorite cartridges and you can find ammo for 5.56 everywhere. For the 458 SOCOM, good luck finding ammunition for it. It is incredibly difficult to find. There are several custom ammo manufacturers like Buffalo Bore and Underwood Ammo that will typically make a decent amount of ammo for the cartridge, but it, you can't beat 5.56 as far as availability is concerned. Incomparable. Great Lakes Ammunition is responsible for a lot of the commercial 458 SOCOM. They oh. might be one of the best places to start if you're looking. And it's a little pricey as well compared to 556 running around 60 cents a round. But your 458 SOCOM round, you're looking at like two to three bucks per shot. Uh, ballistic performance. I would assume that the, the 458 SOCOM's bigger and heavier bullet, as, as damaging as it might be, would somewhat kind of curtail the distance it's effective over. Definitely not going to have the range that your 5.56 five, ammo is going to have as far as staying, you know, supersonic, but uh, the amount of muzzle energy, you're looking around 2,000 foot pounds energy compared to about 1,200 for your, you know, your stereotypical 62 grain bullet fired from a 5.56. Five, range wise, probably looking at about 300 yards for that 458 SOCOM, your 5.56 five, probably get out 600. Well, 300 yards, most people aren't going to attempt to bag a deer ranges beyond that anyway. 2,000 foot-pounds muzzle energy. I mean, I think that outclasses a lot of 12-gauge rifled slugs. Yeah, I, I have to agree with you on that, Dave. And I should qualify. It goes subsonic right around the 300-yard range, depending on your load. But uh, still, it should have more than enough muzzle energy at that point. Uh, you know, be pretty close to taking a deer down. Uh, and your 5.56 just really isn't going to have it. Uh, you know, at that range as far as muzzle energy no. is concerned. Medic energy for 5.56, as far as 1,000 foot-pounds recommended for humane whitetail harvesting, usually peters out between 100 and 150 yards, depending on what you're running. But yeah, uh, 458 SOCOM, incredible uh, terminal ballistics, especially when it's within range, but, uh, you know, not going to give you the longevity or the long-range capability that 5.56 would. Is the 458 SOCOM's trajectory like noticeably steeper and, and more arcing? I know that can kind of complicate long distance shooting for people who haven't really familiarized themselves with it. The 458 has a considerably more arcing trajectory than the 556. At about 300 yards, your typical 556 round is looking at about 12 inches of bullet drop compared to about 45 for the 458 SOCOM. Now, you know, obviously a 458 going to be a bit bigger of a case. Uh, we talk about, you know, the elongated 50. Action Express case going to pack a lot more powder in over double, and that's going to have a pretty profound effect on recoil. You're going to get more kick, especially if you're you're doing an SBR with the 458 SOCOM. It is going to hit a lot harder and about to the tune of five times harder than a 5.56 five, round. Typically, your 5.56 five, ammo is running about four to five foot pounds of free recoil, whereas you're getting about 20 or so uh, with your 458 SOCOM. So, not you know, overly oppressive, uh, but still definitely a lot more than what you'd get with a 5.56. Five, For home defense, that might prove to be a problem, though. I typically advise keeping recoil pretty light for home defense where you're probably going to miss quite a lot. I will say the 458 is a great choice for self-defense. It's a huge bullet. It's going to dump a lot of kinetic energy on the target, but it is going to have a lot more muzzle rise to it, and your follow-up shots are going to be a little bit slower than what you would have with a 5.56. Five, Let's go ahead and wrap it up here. Where are you at on these two? 458 SOCOM, I love it. Asterisk, in theory. Uh, ammo availability is extremely important to me. Um, a ham and egger like me is going to have to spend a lot of time at the range to become proficient with pretty much anything. Spending that much for range ammo, it's just not, it's not appealing to me. 556 five, for for all of its relative shortcomings to the 458 SOCOM the fact that you can't go into a gun store without bumping your toe on on a stack of cases of it yeah. to me that that's all I need to uh all I need to hear I'm I'm not going to engage a threat at ranges beyond gosh 20 yards probably so it's it's just that, that low recoil, extremely available, extremely familiar cartridge is going to beat out a niche thing like the 458 SOCOM every time Dave, I have to echo your sentiment there on the 5.56. Five, the ammo availability is just incomparable to pretty much any other cartridge next to 9mm and 22 long rifle. Being able to basically fall over ammunition wherever you go for the 5.56 five, is really helpful, especially when times 
for finding ammo can be somewhat difficult like in the unmentionable events of 2020. The 458 SOCOM is an absolute horse of a round and it hits hard and I know that hog hunters out there absolutely love it and for that purpose it is spectacular and probably even more effective than the 556 in that role but you know for home defense and things like that the 458 may not give you the follow-up shots that you want and you know, having less rounds in the magazine, which is something we didn't touch on in the podcast, but you've got 10 rounds versus 30 rounds can make a difference in a self-defense situation. So the 556 five, gets my nod with, like you said, an asterisk next to the 458 for awesomeness. So guys, if you love shooting your cartridges, again, make sure you click that like and subscribe button down below so you get notified every time we upload more content here on the channel. And we'll see you out on the range. <laughs>